you can now take advantage of the Oracle 19C database multi-tenant architecture by using multiple pluggable databases, or PDBs, with a single container database, or CDB, significantly reducing the effort associated with database maintenance. Before you create an environment, use the topology tile to set up the topology and template. Choose a topology definition to see its details. To use multiple PDBs for your provisioned environments, you need a topology with a database system with a VM shape. Define the environment template based on your chosen topology. Select Edit Custom Attributes to display the editable options. Under Database System Options, choose the default values for the environments created from your template. When provisioning a new environment, edit the custom attributes for DB system options. You can choose to create a new database system, which creates a new container database and pluggable database. You can change the default CDB and PDB names. If you want to add a PDB to an existing CDB, change the switch for Create New DB System and select the CDB from the drop down list. In this case, be sure that the new PDB name is unique in the CDB. If you have multiple PDBs in a CDB, Backup and Restore and Object Store Refresh aren't supported for a single PDB. If your environment has a DB system with multiple PDBs, which is used as a database tier, you can't stop the DB system. If you delete one of the PDBs in this scenario, only that specific PDB is deleted, not the DB system. This image also supports using multiple PDBs for clone systems, which is described in the next segment. This completes the container database support for database cloud service demonstration. Cloud Manager Image 15 optimizes the cloning process, enabling you to create multiple pluggable databases, or PDBs, inside a container database, or CDB, in a database cloud service environment. Previously, you had to create a new database system to clone a PDB. With Image 15, you can now expedite the cloning process by cloning a PDB into an existing local or remote database system. In local cloning, a copy of the PDB is made using the source PDB, and you can create a PDB clone within the same database system. Use the new Configure button on the Clone page for a comprehensive view of the general settings, like host name and shape name, as well as network configuration details associated with the environment selected to be cloned. When you choose local cloning, the specifications aren't editable on the configuration page. All the values are pre-filled according to the selected environment. You can also clone a PDB to a CDB in another database system using a method called remote cloning. All the values are pre-filled on the configuration page, but you can select the compartment, VCN, subnet, and database system name. You can also enter the TDE wallet password for the selected database system. In addition to these methods, you can clone a PDB by creating a new database system. On the configuration page for a new database system clone, you can edit all the values except availability domain. This completes the cloning optimization feature description. You can now set up policies to manage your environments based on insights provided by the Enhanced System Usage Visualization. The monitoring information for a provisioned environment now includes a comparison of actual usage to recommended usage. You can choose the intervals for the graph's x-axis, such as hourly, bi-hourly, daily, half-day, or weekly. Use the System Usage button to see the enhanced visualization. This visualization provides a view of the monitoring data, the current number of mid-tier nodes, and the Cloud Manager recommended number of mid-tier nodes. These insights are based on auto-scaling decisions that leverage machine learning and enable you to generate policies from your baseline usage. The graph shows the HTTP requests for the specified period of time. 
HTTP requests are just one of the parameters used to form the recommendations for scaling. The calculation takes several other system parameters into account. The recommendations are based on activity in the environment's application server and web server. The orange line shows the current number of mid-tier nodes. The red line shows the number of mid-tier nodes that are recommended to meet the load on the system. The explanatory text at the bottom provides guidance for optimizing your node usage and the cost impact. In this example, the recommendation is to remove nodes that are not required, which would result in cost savings. Based on the insights in the visualization, you can add or remove nodes manually or set up an auto-scale policy to add or remove nodes as recommended. If the recommendation is to remove nodes, you can set up a scale-down policy event. Based on your environment's usage, you'll receive weekly scaling recommendations, which you can access in the Alert section of the Homepage Notifications panel. Administrators can also configure the weekly scaling recommendations to be sent via email. Click the weekly notification link in the alert section to see the weekly recommendation in Cloud Manager. The weekly recommendation could include up to three visualizations. The weekly node requirements plots the number of recommended nodes for each day of the week. The cost comparison shows the potential cost savings when you make the recommended changes. The bar chart shows the number of nodes to be added or removed. The recommendation is explained at the bottom. Cloud Manager also triggers a notification when there's a positive or negative anomaly detected during auto-scaling. In case of a scale-up event, the cost comparison visualization shows the additional costs incurred. In the event of a scale-down, the visualization shows the cost savings. To review all alerts sent by Cloud Manager, select View All Notifications on the home page. You can see all the recommendations and anomalies detected in the Detailed Notifications view and drill into the specific insights. This completes the Recommended Scaling Enhancement description. You can now add multiple web server, application server, and process scheduler server domains with custom configurations for mid-tier nodes. A new grid-like structure on the Domain Settings section lets you add custom attributes at each domain level. Use the Domain Configuration page to add custom configuration. For web server domains, you can create a separate authentication domain for each mid-tier machine and configure the site name to a desired value. Similarly, you can configure your application server domains with specific settings. For example, you can choose to enable Integration Broker on specific application server domains within an environment by setting the Enable IB button on the Domain Configuration page. You can also add Process Scheduler domains with custom configurations and can modify the value of any attribute specific to a particular Process Scheduler domain. Cloud Manager 15 also introduces a new page to configure connections between application and web server domains. Select the application server domains to be connected with each web server node by clicking the Domain Connections button. This option is available from the Environment, Lift and Shift, and the Manage Node pages. Application server domains in the Environment are listed for each web server domain, making it easy to select the required configuration for the Environment or Node. The page also highlights the application server domains that are enabled for Integration Broker. Multiple Integration Broker enabled application server domains can now be connected to web servers. View the connections between application server domains and web server domains with the diagram on the Environment Details page. You must refresh the metadata to see the latest diagrammatic view of the selected environment. This completes the Improving Production Web Server and Integration Broker Deployments feature description. This release offers more ways for you to modify configuration attributes in provisioned environments. 
You can now make modifications directly from the Environment page in Cloud Manager without needing a separate login to the environment. Use the Manage Attributes page to view and modify the attributes for domains. When you select a host and click Fetch Configuration, the available attributes are displayed. You can change the attributes of a domain like minimum and maximum instances or log settings for application server, process scheduler, and PIA domains. However, you can't create new domains or modify names of existing domains. Click Edit and make the required change. Clicking Apply validates your entries. If you make a change that isn't recommended, such as specifying different minimum and maximum values, and submit it, you'll see a warning. You can choose to ignore the warning and continue, or you can change the values. If the change isn't allowed, such as specifying a maximum value that is less than the minimum, you'll see an error and won't be allowed to ignore it. You must correct the error and click Apply again. You can follow the process in the Provision Task Status page. You can review the change in the Application Server Configuration file by signing into the provisioned environment. Go to the App Dome 01 directory and view the psappserve.cfg file. The min and max instances show the values entered. Cloud Manager creates a copy of the original psappserve.cfg file with a date-time suffix. If you need to recover from an error, save the psappserve.cfg file, which includes the modifications, to a new name. Then rename the dated file to psappserve.cfg and use the psadmin command to reconfigure and reboot the domain. This completes the Enabling Configuration Changes to Existing Managed Environments demonstration. We've only shown you the highlights of this Cloud Manager update. For more information and other enhancements, see the CFO tool, the image overview on My Oracle Support, and go to the PeopleSoft Information Portal for updates.